Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're going to be learning finger picking etude number 13. So this piece is going to be a really great challenge for the beginner because it's going to introduce you to quite a few concepts that are going to help advance your playing. Now the big one is going to be movement. So as you saw in the performance video, we're going to be playing throughout the entire span of the neck. So we're going to be breaking away from playing only in the beginning of the neck, for example, frets one through three. We're also going to be talking about a three finger approach for picking. So we're going to make our right hand picking very efficient in this lesson. And we're also going to cover a couple other things such as partial bar chords. We'll talk a little bit about proper left hand form. And we're going to touch on dynamics just a bit too. So we've got a lot to cover in this lesson. So before we jump into learning it, let's talk a little bit about the lesson. So we're going to be learning the entire piece in this lesson. But if you'd like to get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's going to be available at rockclass101.com. So you can click this link right here to check out the entire lesson, or you can go to the site and do a search for finger picking etude number 13. And also on that page, there's going to be an on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a really great asset in getting a song like this down that much easier. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into learning this tune. The first thing I want to point out is that we're going to be counting out rhythms as we work our way throughout it. Now, the rhythms of this song, they're very simple. It's predominantly all eighth notes. There's a couple quarter notes and there's a half note at the very end. So if you're new to understanding and counting rhythms while you're playing, then I would really, really encourage you to hit pause on this video and check out this lesson. And that's gonna get you up to speed on learning how to count rhythms as you play. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is our right hand approach for picking. We're gonna be using a three finger approach. So most people would wanna use these three fingers. I use these three, but let's talk about this way first and then I'll talk about the way I do it. Basically your thumb will be playing everything on string four and three, index would play string two, and middle would play string one. So that's for using these three fingers. I like to use these three because I have a bit of um, nerve damage in my index finger, so I tend to avoid it a little bit. But if you want to try the way I'm doing, it's basically the same concept where thumb plays string four and three, and then this time around middle would play string two, and ring would play string one. So either, either one works, so try both out and see which one works best for you. If you want to learn more about using a three finger approach, you want to get more exercises, you want to learn more about using a four finger approach and using a one finger approach, then check out our finger picking concepts. Lots of exercises and lots of etudes to help you learn three different styles of finger picking. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into learning it. So I'm gonna play just the first two bars and I want you guys to think of these two bars as the main melody. So the big thing that I want you to listen for here is the rhythm. So it's gonna be all eighth notes. So every note will last the same amount of time, the same length of time. So remember, we count eighth notes as one and two and three and four and so everything remains nice and even and steady. So here's what the first two bars sound like and then we'll break it down and learn it. Okay, so let's go ahead and tackle that. But actually, let's cut it in half and that'll make it a bit easier. So let me play bar one and let me count out that rhythm too. So it'll just help clarify the eighth note feel. So I have three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so there's the first bar. So the big thing that you probably already noticed is that we're literally playing two strings. We're playing string four and string one. So remember with our right hand approach for picking, we're using three fingers, right? And if you're using the regular way uh, that I think most people will use, it was these three fingers. That meant that our thumb played string four and middle finger played string one. So the big takeaway with the right hand is that we don't have a lot of movement. We wanna keep our right hand really stable. So 
It's kind of the opposite of strumming, so check it out. Watch how little movement I have in my right hand. So it's not any kind of big movement like if you were strumming, not like... Right, so we, we want to keep the right hand as stationary as possible. It's going to help increase our accuracy as we're playing throughout this. So the other thing that's tricky is movement. So let's talk about that. Now, ukuleles always have, well, almost always have fret markers that help guide us. Unfortunately, some ukuleles have the first dot that begins on the third fret, some have it that begin on the fifth fret. So take a look at which one you have, and that's gonna help you know where you're at. So I'm gonna be highlighting the layout that my ukulele has. So if I look at the first dot, I notice it's on the third fret. If I look at the next one, I see it's on the fifth fret. If, we, if I look at the third dot, I see it's on the seventh fret, the fourth dot is the 10th fret, and the double dot, almost all ukuleles have a double dot on the 12th fret. So I wanna memorize that. I wanna memorize the first dot is three, five, seven, 10, 12. And here's the big takeaway. I see tons of beginners curve their, or pivot their ukulele down like this to look at the dots on the fretboard. But remember, that's gonna break proper form for holding the ukulele. And if you're new to learning how to hold the ukulele. I'll put a link in the description box below for a lesson on that. But we don't ever want to do that. We want to remember that the dots are also on the top of the neck. So that's where you want to keep your eye. That's where you want to be looking. So again, you have three, five, seven, 10, 12. So keep your eye in there and don't break the proper form of holding the ukulele. Now, if we look at the first part that we're playing, I was playing O, 10, O, 5. So I'm going from the 10th fret to the 5th fret. So the big thing here, and this is what I want you to be doing as we're learning it and as you're practicing, is to never watch your finger move down. Don't keep your eye on your finger as it moves from 10 to 5. I want you to put your eye on the target. So you start on 10, but your eye is going to be on the target of the 5th fret and you're gonna move your hand until it meets your eye on that target of the fifth fret. That's gonna make it much easier to play and you're gonna increase your accuracy. So I, I, I can't say it enough, that is the best way to handle jumps and not only in this song, but anytime you have big movements is to set your eye on the target. Don't watch your left hand move down or up across the fretboard. So let's go ahead and tackle the first part. So. We're gonna be playing the fourth string open throughout all of this. So go ahead and play the open G, and then take that middle finger. We can use a middle finger for this entire first bar and second bar. Put your middle finger on the 10th fret of string one. So you're gonna play the open G, and then the 10th fret of string one. Then we're going to play the open G again, and during this open G, we're gonna be transitioning down. We're gonna move down to the fifth fret of string one. So all of this, again, remember, is string four and string one. So you have open four, 10th fret, open four again, then fifth fret. But while you're hitting that open G for the second time, that's when you're gonna be moving down. So it buys you time to move your left hand down. So you have O, 10, O, five, okay? Now, as we move down, we can do it two ways. We can keep finger pressure held down, but as you may hear and it pick up um, as I'm recording plugged in, you will hear some string noise as you move down if you keep pressure held down. So to eliminate that, what you can do is you can lift up. Now, if you take, take any chord, for example, a G chord, if you strum that chord, and you lift pressure up and strum from three down. You can see I still have the form of the chord intact, but if I lift pressure up, it's like I'm doing a mute. That's the trick that we wanna do here. If I lift pressure up and I just literally just glide across the string to the next fret, it'll clean up my playing. So if I play O, 10, 
I can lift the pressure up so you can see the string is no longer depressed. And I'm going to hit the open G and I'm just going to move down and I still am touching the string, but I'm not pushing down. And then when I get to the fifth fret, I can push down again. So in action, it looks like O, 10, O, 5. So you can see I'm O, push down, lift up, open, slide down, push down again, 5. So you may want to just hit pause and just practice. Don't worry about the timing. Just work on lifting up, sliding down, pushing down again. But the whole time, I never completely lift up. So I'm never going anything like that. So I'm not lifting all the way up to push down again. So remember, it's as if we push down, lift pressure up, but still touch the string as if it was muted, and then slide down to the next fret and push down again. So that's the trick to clean it up. So again, let's break down the first half. We have O, 10, O, 5. So that gives us the first half of bar one. If we try together, it sounds like this. I'll demonstrate first and then you and I will do it together. So the rhythm is one and two and. Okay, so I'm gonna count three and four and. We'll start together on one. Here we go. Three and four and. One and two and. Awesome. So now the second half of bar one is going to again begin with an open G and then it's going to see us moving up a whole step to the seventh fret. So this brings up a great point to just kind of re reiterate. There's the word. <laughs> reiterate is the dots. The dots help guide us. So if we think about it, we can think of it two ways, right? We started on 10, moved to five, and now we're going up to seven. But we can also use the dots. We started on the fourth dot, moved to the second dot, and now we're going up to the third dot. So think of it both ways, and that will help guide you that much better. So the second half will begin with the open G, and then we're gonna play the seventh fret of string one. And then again, we're gonna play the open G after that, and we have a big jump again going down to the second fret. Now the second fret is one fret behind the first dot. Okay, so we have a big jump. So remember, as you move down, keep your eye on the target, the second fret. Don't watch your left hand slide down. Keep your eye on that target and move your hand till it meets your eye. Okay, so the second half, we're playing open G, seventh fret, open G, second fret. Okay, same concept applies to where we lift pressure up, slide down as if it was a mute, and then we can play that second fret. Okay, so if I try the second half by myself, I have O, Sev, O, Two. Okay, so let's see if you and I can do it together. We'll start on beat three. One and two and three and four and. Awesome. So now let's see if we can do the entire bar. So here we go. I'll try it myself and then you and I will do it. So remember, we keep that rhythm constant. So eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. Okay, so let's try that a little bit slower. Here we go. Three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Nice. So a great way to practice this is just to loop one bar at a time. So I'm gonna link in the comments below a lesson on proper practice. So when I was in music college, the first lesson on day one was how to practice the correct way. And part of that involved repetition and reinforcement. So repetition, it means that we're just going to loop this over and over again. And reinforcement means that we're going to come back to it later in the day, maybe an hour later, and do it again. And then tomorrow, we'll do it again. So take one bar at a time. Don't try to tackle this entire song. Take one bar at a time and loop it. Practice in a timing. 
two and three and four and one and two and three and four and just keep looping it until you get it nicely in time and nice and clean for your playing. Every note rings nice and clean. All right, so let's take a look at the second bar. And the second bar starts the same where we're playing off of string four and then string one, but it's gonna end playing off of string four and then string two. So here's what it sounds like. Okay, so let's break that one down. So we're starting on the open G again, and then we're playing the third fret. So literally, we left off on that second fret. We're just gonna move up a half step to that first dot. We're gonna play that third fret. So we're gonna go open, third fret, and then open G again, and open A. So that gives us the first half. So we have O, three, O, O. So string four, string one, string four, string one. So again, one and two and. So let's give it a shot, you and I, here we go. Three and four and. One and two and. And a little bit slower. Three and four and. One and two and. Now here's where it switches up for the second half. We're still gonna be playing off of the open G but we're literally gonna move that middle finger up a string, directly up a string to the third fret of string two. And that's where it's gonna stay for the rest of this bar. So we're gonna play the open G and then the third fret of string two. And again, repeat that open G, third fret of string two. Okay, so let's see if we can try that. Go ahead and take that middle finger, put it on the third fret of string two. Here we go. We'll start on beat three. One and two and three and four four, and awesome. So if we try this entire bar, we're gonna start on the third fret of string one. Here we go. Three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and awesome. So now let's see if we can go one through two. But remember that practicing tip, you wanna just loop one bar at a time. Get that down nice and clean in time before you try and tackle two bars at a time. So both bars together, let's see if we can do it. So here we go, one and two, and ready, go. Now, one and two, and three and four, and one and two, and three and four, and. Now if that's a bit too fast for you. You can use that little cog on the YouTube player to slow it down. I'll put a little image here with directions. You can slow it to 75, 50% speed and practice that way too. So one thing too I wanna to point out is that these two bars are actually gonna repeat. So you're actually gonna just double these two bars. So you're gonna play them two times in a row. And it's really great to practice that transition to restart it. So a lot of times people would Basically, just play the part once, like, right, and then take a break and pause. But it's really good to go back and restart that section. So you just wanna practice two times in a row. You see how hard that jump is? You've gotta go from that third fret of string two to restarting the, this main melody at the 10th fret of string one. So the same rules apply where we keep our eye on the target. All right, so now that we've got the main melody down, let's take a look at the next section. So let's take a look at bar three and four now. And bar three and four is where we get into our repetitive picking pattern. So this is a bit like Travis picking. And basically all it means is that we are going to be playing the same pattern with the right hand but the chord will change. So we're still using a three finger approach for finger picking. So remember thumb got string four and three, index got string two, middle got string one. And our repetitive pattern is going to be this. It's gonna be three, two, four, one. So we have three, two, four, one. So I want you guys to try that. And this rhythm still is eighth notes. So let's just try this with open strings. We're gonna go string three, string two, string four, string one. Okay, so we have three, two, four, one. And let's see if we can go at that speed. So we have three and four and one and two and three and four. 
four, and awesome. So three, two, four, one, that's what you want to memorize. That in a nutshell is Travis picking where you have the same right hand pattern, three, two, four, one, but you're going to be playing different chords. So this song will start on C major seven, and then it will lift that middle finger up and go to C6. So you have. So we're switching or alternating between two different chords. So let's break this down. So the third bar and the fourth bar, they're both identical. So if you get the third bar down, you already know the fourth bar. So we're starting on C major seven. Take that middle finger, put it on the second fret of string one, and that's it. And the rest are open. So open four, three, and two. Okay. So with our right hand picking pattern known, now let's go ahead and do it. So the first half we have three, two, four, one. And the second half, we're just gonna lift that middle finger up where we have, again, three, two, four, one. So the first half of the third bar is with it down, three, two, four, one. The second half is with it up, three, two, four, one. Okay, so that rhythm put together, one and two and three and four and. And it's that simple and that easy. So let's give it a shot together. Here we go, slowly. Three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Awesome. Now remember, this is gonna repeat again for bar four. So let's see if we can do it two times in a row. Here we go. Three and four and, bar three. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Nice. Now one other thing too that I wanna point out, you see that I'm keeping that middle finger down up until the very last note. So I have one and two and three and four, lift up for the end of four. So it's just gonna help sustain that chord out throughout the entire bar. So you can see that the finger gets added every time that it comes and it's played in the rhythm. So it just helps to sustain it. So again, if we point out that I have three, two, four, one, keep it held down, lift up, down, up. So you just wanna add it at the time that it's needed. That's just gonna help sustain and make it sound that much prettier. All right guys, so after that, we're into the next couple bars and this is the same as the main melody. So you're literally just gonna play the main melody again, but the big difference here is you're not repeating it. You're only playing it once. So you're only playing two bars instead of as we did in the beginning where we repeated it and we played it four, four bars. So we played it twice. So again, you're just playing 010, 05, 07, 02, 03, 00, 03, 03. So you're gonna do that and then you're going to move on to the next section. And this next section is gonna be four bars in length. And here's what it sounds like. So really pretty sounding stuff. So let's break down the first two bars because again, it's kind of like what we saw earlier with the C major seven, where we learn the bar once and then it gets repeated again. So this first bar is out of A9. So you can think of it as your regular A7 chord. This is a chord that a lot of you probably know by now. It's just the index finger on the first fret of string three and then for the context of the song we're playing, we're going to be adding one more finger. We're gonna be adding the ring finger to the second fret of string one. And this makes it an A9. So it's a dominant with a B note added to it. Okay, so for this, we're going to go ahead and keep this chord intact and we're continuing with the same Travis picking repetitive right hand finger picking pattern. So again, that was three, two, four, one, okay? So let's go ahead and try that together. That gives us the first half of this bar. Here we go, three 
and four and one and two and. Now for the second half, you're going to be lifting up that ring finger and the second half sees us playing three, two, four, open A, okay? But remember how we talked earlier that we wanna keep that held down until the very last note of the bar. So it sustains and it sounds prettier. So you have one and two and three and four and. So you lift up at the very end and that's gonna give us a really nice, pretty sustained sound. So let's see if we can try that bar together nice and slow. Three and four and one and two and three and four and. Nice. So that's gonna repeat again for the next bar. So let's try that together. Here we go, two times in a row. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Awesome. Now the next two bars are pretty simple. It's gonna to go to a regular C chord, although we're gonna form it with a different finger. So we're gonna use our middle finger for that third fret of string one. And the reason why is because when we go to the partial bar chord for this last bar, it's gonna be really easy to transition to the D over G. So you can see how easy it is. Everything is lined up in place. So we're gonna talk about that in a second but let's go ahead and start with the C. So with our middle finger intact on that third fret of string one, we're just gonna run the repetitive right hand picking pattern two times in a row. Three, two, four, one, three, two, four, one. And that gives us that bar. So let's give it a shot together. Here we go. Three and four and one and two and three and four and. Awesome. Now, we wanted to use the middle finger to make transitioning to this D over G easier. Because if you notice, there's one really important thing that we're doing right here. We're playing out of a position, which I like to think of as a box. And that box is frets two to five. Basically, that means that as I played through it, each finger gets its own fret. And that makes playing really efficient. So if I keep the middle finger for the third fret, then my first finger is totally ready for the second fret, my pinky's totally ready for the fifth fret. So the transition is really easy. Now let's break this chord down. It's gonna be a partial bar chord. So proper left hand form is vital here. Now, if you're new to understanding proper left hand form and how it differs between playing some of these basic chords where you're on fingertip versus partial bar chords where we cover either two or three strings and full bar chords where we cover all four strings, then check out this lesson right here. It's gonna go really in depth into talking about this left hand form. So having this U-shaped gap, placement of the thumb and in the back of the neck, as well as the curvature of the index finger. So all that's gonna be covered in that lesson. So if you're new to playing partial bar chords and getting form down, check out that lesson. So with that said, to give you a quick rundown, I have my index finger partially barred on the second fret, strings one, two, and three. I'm keeping the G string open. You can see that I'm completely straight and I'm bent at that knuckle right here and I have this U-shaped gap formed, and my thumb is pretty much in the middle of the neck, maybe a tiny bit above the middle. Again, all this is gonna be covered in greater detail on that lesson. But once I get that down, I'm gonna add the pinky to the fifth fret of string one. Okay, so in total I have open, second, second, five. That gives me a D with a G in the bass, so D over G. Very pretty sounding chord. So again, we're gonna keep with the picking pattern with one difference. The very last note is going to be cut out. So we're gonna play beat four as a quarter note. So the rhythm is one and two and three and four. 
Okay, we're doing that because it's gonna buy us enough time to transition from this tricky chord back to the main melody. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this chord intact, push nice and hard, and let's give it a shot. So we have three, two, four, one, three, two, four. Okay, here we go. Three and four and one and two and three and four. Awesome. So if we backtrack, let's try C to the D over G. And you may want to hit pause and practice the transition going from C to D over G. And the big takeaway here is that these fingers need to move in unison. So you don't want to go ba ba. You want to go together. So together. So C D G. C D over G. So that is what you want to practice that transition. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Here we go. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Nice. Now let's backtrack. Let's try A9 two times in a row to C to D over G. So we got four bars. Here we go. Three and four and one and two and three and four and again one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four very good so that's probably the hardest part of this tune right there those couple bars that are a little bit tricky. So now if we recap everything that we've done so far, we're 12 bars through. Um, remember the first two bars were the melody that got repeated twice. So at this point in the song, you are going to jump back. You have a DS Alcoda. So if you're following with the tablature, you see DS Alcoda. That means to jump back to the sign. So you see that little image of the sign at the very first bar of the tune. So you're gonna jump back, you're going to play that main melody two times in a row. And then you're going to go into this first bar after that. So on the tab it says the third bar, but it's that C major seven. So you're going to play that bar once and then you go into the alternate ending. So you says Dakota above it, you're gonna jump to on the tab bar 11, which sounds like this. Okay, so let's call that out again in a little bit simpler of words. So again, what you do is you jump back, you play that main melody two times in a row, that's four bars. And then you're going to play the very next bar, C major seven, just as we did before. Three, two, four, one, three, two, four. Lift up to play the open. And then you have a variation. The second time through, you're going to play what we're about to learn right now, which is this cool little pull off with a different rhythmic ending. So let's break that down. So we are starting the same where we're going to play string three, string two, string four, all that's open. And then we have a pull off lick. So if you're new to pull offs, I'm gonna put a lesson in the description box below that's gonna cover hammer-ons and pull offs. Basically, I want you to take that middle finger, put it on the third fret of string one and put your index finger behind it. So we're going to pick this note once. We're gonna pick the third fret, pull off to the second fret and then pull off to the open A. So you have three, two, O. Oh. But you can see the big takeaway is that I only pick one time, so. And I wanna keep that rhythm steady as well. I want it to be and three, and, so all eighth notes. So again, if you're new to pull offs, check out that lesson below. It's gonna teach you the mechanics on pull offs but the key takeaway is to pull off slightly down, not lift straight up. But that lesson will cover it in greater detail. So give it a shot. You want to go three, two, open. 
Okay, let's try together. Ready, go. Three, two, open. And again. Three, two, open. And again. The goal for these pull-offs is to make it all sound the same in volume. So it's as if we were to go. So we want every note to ring at the same volume. So in essence, a pull-off cuts down the work on the right hand, and it sounds cool. It gives it a nice little characteristic, different kind of dynamic. So if we recap the first part, we had three, two, four, pull-off. Okay, so we have three, two, four, three, two, oh. We're gonna end by playing the fourth string open. That's gonna be hit on beat four. So if I count out the rhythm, I have one and two and three and four. Okay, let's give it a shot, you and I together. Here we go. Three and four and one and two and three and four. So after that, we're into the last two bars of the tune, and you can see it's got a little RIT above it. That stands for retardando. So we want to do a slow down. We want to retard at the end. So we have the same melody, but we're just gonna gradually slow down and give us a nice ending. We have a fermata on that last note before probably the most tricky chord of the tune. But you can hear the big takeaway here is the dynamic. We want to gradually slow down. So imagine you're driving, right? And the light's green, but in the distance you see it turn yellow. What do you do? You gradually slow down. You don't get to the light and slam on your brakes, right? You gradually slow down to stop on red. Same thing with our playing. So if I'm playing the last couple bars before the ending, I want to just gradually and naturally slow down like that. So that's the big takeaway here. Another helpful tip is to either sing out the melody with the retardando in there. It'll help you get the fill down. You can also count out the rhythm. So for example, if I play the last four bars, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four and one and two and... So, Doing something like that really helps to get that feel. So if you can sing it, you can play it. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can try the retardando together. So we'll start at like three and four and one and two and three and four and. So we'll start to slow down about on beat three. Here we go, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two Awesome. So you can see on the very last bar, we're literally stopping halfway through. So we're not going to go 0303. So we're not finishing it up by playing up onto that second string. Instead, on beat three, we're going to catch the G add nine chord, which is the hardest one in this tune. So let's just double reinforce where that comes in. So you have one and two and three and four and. So bar one's the same, bar two, one and two and you're playing half of bar two and then you're going to this g add nine chord this one is going to take a lot of work this one is a partial bar chord on two strings and a lot of finger strength and dexterity so take the index finger i want you to bar it on the seventh fret strings one and two you're flat at that first joint curved at this knuckle right here. So this finger unfortunately is gonna be in the way, but let's see if we can angle it for the shot. So that knuckle's bent right there, but the first joint flat. And you can see the form I have, wider U-shaped gap than before. Again, slightly above the middle of the neck with the thumb. From here, I want you to add the ring finger to the ninth fret of string three. So see if you can get that. We're keeping the G string open for through all of this, by the way. Okay, so if you can get that clean, O, oh, nine, sev, sev, we're gonna add the last finger, which is the pinky to the 10th fret of string one. Okay, so in all we have O, oh, nine, sev, 10. Okay, 
You can see the pinky is not going to be straight. It's kind of offset, curved a little bit to the right. The ring finger perfectly on a fingertip, maybe slightly down a little bit, but bent and curved at both joints. And that's going to give us a great position and form for catching this chord. Now you have time to get this chord shape intact because if we look at the last bar, we had one and two and. So when you play that open A, we're gonna do it as a fermata, which means that we're gonna hold it out, let it linger for as long as we want, and that'll buy us enough time to get up the neck and catch this tricky chord. So if I play this last bar with that fermata, I have one and two and, and I can hold it as long as I wish and then catch that chord. So it's just gonna be one that you're gonna to have to practice. And again, the same thing we talked about where we wanna try and add all three fingers at the same time, not ba, ba, ba. So this one is just gonna take a lot of work. So don't get frustrated. This one is the hardest part of the song. But it sounds so cool. <laughs> so, so cool. If you wanna make it easier though, you can get rid of the third finger and you can pluck string four, two, one. And that will make it so much easier and still give us a nice pretty ending. But this extra note right here, this A note, is what gives us the ninth and gives us some color for this chord. So let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can try those last four bars together with the retardando, with the fermata, with the tricky chord at the end. And here we go. Three. Oh, and well, I should say we're starting on C major seven. Here we go. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two, and strum. And I'm just using that thumb. Nice, soft, subtle, strum down. Slow strum. Okay, I guess it gives us the entire song, guys. So let's see if we can go through the entire thing. I'm gonna play it a bit faster. Remember, you can use the YouTube cog to slow it down if you want. Um, or if you're a premium member on the site, use the on-screen tab here, much, much better, much more interactive. So here we go, all the way through, and we're kicking off on the melody. Remember, two times for this first part. Here we go. One, and two, and three, and four, and 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 one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. And four and and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two three and four one and two and three and four and one and two and strum. Oh, that's hard to. I'm tired. <laughs> takes your breath away counting out all that. Uh, that's a lot, but in the scope of things, guys, it's really only uh, 13 bars on the tab. That doesn't account for the repetition of that riff a few times. So there's only 13 bars you have to learn, and out of those 13, quite a few of them repeat. So it's not a lot of music, but again, there's so many concepts that we pulled from this lesson that are great. In terms of movement, that was the big one. In terms of a right hand picking approach, a three finger approach, we had partial bar chords, um, we had pull offs. So there's a lot of really, really cool things that help somebody that's at that beginner level 
which is probably you who's watching this, get to that next level and learn some more techniques and advance your playing, especially paying attention to the dynamics and the feel of your playing as well. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember, you can get the tabs to follow along with. You can print them out as a PDF uh, format at rockclass101.com. You can click this link to get them, or you can go to the site, just do a search for finger picking etude number 13. And don't forget that really cool interactive tab player is on the site. So you can highlight bars, loop sections, great way to practice. All of that again is on the site. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in the next one. Take care.